to thank you all so much for joining us tonight. We are really excited to be able to share with you our How to Win Awards at Model UN event. So in just a minute, we'll get started. And I want to thank all of you again for joining us tonight. We have an amazing set of panelists here to answer your questions and to help you excel at Model United Nations. But without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and kick it off and share a little bit about this event and what you can expect this evening. So for those of you I haven't met before, my name is Laura Beth Goldsmith, and I am the Executive Director of Partnerships at Best Delegate, and I'm really excited to have all of you here with us this evening. Tonight, we are going to be covering 10 tips from award-winning MUNers on how to win at Model UN, and actually it'll end up being a lot more than 10 tips by the time we are all done. And so just to get us started, I would love to get an idea of who's here with us tonight. So if you'd like to introduce yourself in the chat, please feel free to do so. Please feel free to share your name, where you're from, and about how many Model UN conferences you've been to. So we can get an idea of if we have beginner delegates or advanced delegates here with us this evening. So please feel free to introduce yourselves. Panelists, you're welcome to introduce yourself in the chat as well, and we can get an idea of who we have here with us tonight. I see many people joining in from all over the country and all over the world. Thank you all so much for uh, being here this evening. Hi, Hannah, welcome from England. Great to have you. Ah, living in Panama, you've been to five or more conferences. That's awesome to hear. Uh, hopefully we will give you some amazing advanced tips to help you take those skills to the next level. It is great to have you here and all of the other uh, delegates we have joining us and panelists we have joining us today as well. Hi, Julia, welcome uh, from Canada. Great to have you here as well. And please feel free to keep introducing yourself in the chat and we'll get an idea of who we have here with us tonight. Hi, Noor, nice to meet you. Great to have you here as well. We have some new delegates and some experienced delegates. This session should help all of you uh, get a lot more confident with Model UN. So thank you for tuning in and joining us this evening. My name, like I mentioned, is Laura Beth Goldsmith, and I am the Executive Director of Partnerships at Best Delegate, which basically means I have the amazing job of getting to work with all of our students, parents, schools, school districts, governments, and even the UN to set up opportunities for students to do Model UN all over the world. I've been doing Model UN for the last 15 years, and I'm really passionate about this incredible activity. Uh, I myself was an award-winning delegate throughout high school and college, uh, consistently gaveling at conferences, and I'm very excited to share uh, some of my tips and experience, as well as the tips and experience of our awesome panelists who are here this evening. So over the course of the next hour, you'll get the chance to receive our ambassador guide for advanced delegates. So you get to learn a little bit more about how to excel in Model UN. I'll also share with all of you in 10 minutes or less, my favorite top 10 tips on how to win at Model UN. And then you'll get to the chance to meet all of our award-winning panelists who will answer your questions. We got a lot of awesome questions submitted in advance, and we're also happy to take questions live throughout this event that we can add in as well. And at the very end of the program, we will also give you a preview of the ambassador program that will be happening at the Virtual MUN Institute this summer for those of you looking to take your skills to the next level. And with that, I would love to share with you the ambassador guide. Uh, Jess is going to drop the link in the chat for everyone as well. This is an awesome guide that goes in detail on all the tips I'm going to share with you on how to really excel at Model UN and take your skills to the next level. So after our call tonight, please feel free to check out this guide. Many of the things that we're going to share with you tonight can be found and elaborated on in detail in this awesome ambassador guide. And now, without further ado, I'm going to jump into 10 tips on how to win awards at Model UN in 10 minutes or less, just to get us all started today. Tip one, remember that your chairs are Model UNers just like you. Chairs really want respect. They want smooth sailing and they want grateful delegates. They want it to be a fun experience for them and for you. They're giving up their time to help you have an awesome MUN experience. Tip number two, always brand yourself and your skills and your ideas. There are many delegates in a room, sometimes in general assembly committees, you may have hundreds of delegates in the room. And in virtual and online MUN, you often have you know, many delegates too. So it's sometimes hard to stand out. 
So you want to make sure you brand yourself and your ideas. How can you do that? Feel free to brand your idea, your block, and your resolution. If you are giving a speech and you clearly say the Africa block and you make it clear to everyone what block you're a part of, that will help you stand out. And you also can come up with creative names for your resolutions as well. Feel free to use creative and fancy acronyms so everyone remembers your resolution and your idea. Tip number three, please have speeches that have structure. Feel free to give speeches that have hook, point, and action. This is a simple framework that can help you take your public speaking skills to the next level. And Jess is gonna drop into the chat for everyone a link to the Learning Center on the Best Delegate website. If you haven't checked it out yet, there are some amazing resource videos that will teach you exactly how to do this. But the 30 second summary, uh, hook point action. In any speech you give, you wanna make sure you start off with a hook, a question, a quote, a statistic or a story, something to grab the audience's attention and hook them into your speech. Then you wanna have one main point, the key thing that you want the audience to remember from your speech. And finally, a call to action, something you want them to do after hearing your speech. So please feel free to check out that Learning Center video to learn more about how to structure your speeches. Tip four, be stylish with your public speaking. It is far more fun for your fellow delegates and for your chairs to listen when you have great style. One of my favorite speeches in recent history uh, was Emma Watson giving the he for she speech at the UN. She had great style, both in the way she physically presented her speech, as well as the way she sounded when speaking. So in the Learning Center, if you wanna learn how to take your public speaking style to the next level, feel free to check out two videos we have there. We have one on public speaking sound, and we have one on public speaking body language. And there's tips about how to control your volume and your tone, as well as your pace and the way that you appear with your hands, your eyes and your feet. And basically you wanna come off as confident. And the more you practice that, the better your public speaking style is going to be. Tip number five, please feel free to frame the debate. There's a lot of chaotic things happening throughout a Model UN debate. And if you can help frame it for your fellow delegates, as well as for the chair, it's really going to help you stand out. So if you're in a committee, for example, on climate change, and the topic that's being discussed in a moderated caucus is desertification, you might want to listen to what other delegates are saying and pull that into the speech that you give if you're one of the later speakers and specifically mention what other delegates have said, mention the top themes that are coming out from their speeches. And then also, like we said before, when you're framing, give a clear and concise idea and a clear and concise name that reminds people of your key idea that you're going back to. So you frame the debate, pull out the key pieces and also uh, use something catchy that relates to you or your country or topic to help people really remember it as well. Tip number six, it is really important to bring out the best in other delegates. A great delegate isn't just controlling the committee the whole time, they're helping everyone to succeed. And chairs notice this. Chairs want to see people working together. They want to see people bringing you into the circle, or if you're virtual, the metaphorical circle, and really helping people to excel in their committees. Tip number seven, write a strong resolution. Chairs read a lot of resolutions over the course of the year, and they know the difference between one that has great details and is strong, and one that's a little bit weak on the ideas. So if you want to stand out, write a strong resolution, have strong ideas with details on who, what, where, when, why, how, and how funded. And also consider formatting your resolution well. It's a lot easier when a chair doesn't have to edit something that comes up to them and it is really high quality. Tip number eight, don't correct the chair. Chairs really are experienced in Model UN and they make mistakes just like all of us. And if you need to, you can but I would only correct a chair's parliamentary procedure if it's essential. If they made a little mistake that's not going to impact you or your country majorly, I would just continue right along with that debate. Tip number nine, practice, practice, practice. The more you practice, the better off you're going to be at Model UN and the more likely you are going to be to really succeed in your committee. How can you practice? Consider doing public speaking exercises, consider mini debates and full simulations. And if you're interested, join us at the Virtual MUN Institute this summer. And tip number 10, ask for feedback. 
None of us get better without watching and learning and growing and asking for feedback is a great way to do that. Consider asking your teammates, your chair and your MUN mentor if you participate in any best delegate program on how you can take your skills to the next level. All right, I hope that those top 10 tips were helpful for all of you to get started. And now I want our amazing panelists to have the opportunity to introduce themselves and to really get into your questions at a deeper level. So tonight we have six incredible panelists who will introduce themselves in just a moment. We have Jess, Dylan, and Harry who are all amazing high school level model UNers that have won many, many awards and participated in student leadership opportunities. And we also have incredible college level staffers, many of whom are about to graduate from university and are happy to share their top tricks and tips with you. We have Stephen, Ashley, and Stephen here tonight to share their advice as well. And now I'm going to stop sharing my screen so all of you can see our incredible panelists, and we are going to jump right in with some awesome questions. If you have a question, please feel free to put it either in the Q&A function if you're able to easily see that tab on your screen, or you can drop it in the chat as well, and we'll be watching both of those. But to get us started, we're going to start with some of the questions that were submitted uh, in advance. And we're going to start off first by having our panelists introduce themselves to all of you. So Ashley, would you please introduce yourself first to everyone here joining us tonight? Yeah, of course. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Ashley. I currently go to Florida International University in Miami. Um, I actually started Model UN at the start of my college career, I guess. Um, at my high school, they did not offer Model UN, sadly. So, you know, I feel like a lot was kind of lost in that. But um, overall, I've had a great time in Model UN. I've traveled to about 20 conferences with FIU in the past three years, um, which is super awesome. And I've been able to work with um, Best Delegate for the past two years as a chair um, and as a mentor for um, the VMUNI. Uh, that being said, a uh, award I was particularly proud to win in Model UN was probably um, my first gavel that I got at Choma a couple years ago. Um, I worked really, really hard, put in a lot of work, a lot of research, and I felt like that was the first time I really got an award um, that really like reflected how much work I put in. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Thank you very much, Ashley. Uh, next, Harry, would you please introduce yourself? Sure thing. So um, I'm Harry. Um, I go to Upper Canada College in Toronto, Canada. Um, I've got two years of MUN experience and an award that I'd say I'm particularly proud of is um, winning the Best Delegate Award and also the um, research Best Research Paper Award in Berkeley. Awesome. Thank you, Harry. Uh, next up, Jess, would you please introduce yourself? Absolutely. Good evening, everyone, and happy Earth Day. Um, I'm Jess. I'm from the outside of the DC area, which is code for I live in Northern Virginia. Um, I go to the Madeira School, and I'm a junior in high school. Um, I would have to say, oh, well, I've had, I've been to countless uh, Model UN conferences at this point. Um, I've been to some with Best Delegate. I've been to Naaman and several others on the East Coast as well. Um, and I would have to say, even though I had all that experience, my favorite and most important award that I've ever won would have to be my first best delegate at the first conference I had ever attended, um, where I was shaking in my boots and I had to call my mom in the middle of the tournament for support um, because I was so nervous and couldn't bear to speak up for the first day. But I finally got control of it and ended up winning that award. Very cool, Jess. I'm so glad you stuck with it. Uh, Stephen H, would you please introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Stephen. Um, I go to college at Seton Hall University, where I'm a senior. Um, and I also, like Ashley, started Model UN when I got to Seton Hall in college. Um, since then, Model UN has kind of dominated my whole life. Um, I've been to 17 conference, so conferences over the past four years um, with our team. And um, a lot, some of those have been virtual in the past year, um, but many were in person. Um, I was the president of our team for two years, and I also founded our collegiate conference, which we started in the fall to deal with uh, the COVID pandemic. So we were one of the first virtual conferences. Um, my favorite award that I ever won and, and my first award, uh, or my first best delegate award rather, was at um, a small conference that Penn State holds um, every year. Um, it's an absolute blast. And I remember like just being so afraid 
um, to sit in that closing ceremonies and find out what award, if, if any, I was going to win. Um, but it was just one of the best feelings of my life. And I think, honestly, that's when I got completely hooked in Model UN. Um, so I'm super excited to, to be here on the panel and share some of that experience tonight. Thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, next, Dylan, would you please introduce yourself? Yeah, definitely. So hi, everyone. My name is Dylan. I'm currently in 10th in tenth grade at Syosset High School on Long Island, which is about 30 minutes outside of New York City. Um, I've been doing Model UN since, since sixth grade, so I have a lot of experience in it. Um, and I've enjoyed it pretty much every moment since. This year, it's my first year involved in Best Delegate, but I've gone to countless um, local conferences around Long Island area. I went to one last year before COVID in Baltimore. Um, and this year I've done a bunch of virtually. So, um, so the, one of the mo awards I'm most proud of is actually this year through American University. They have their um, annual conference called Ameri Muni. Um, it was a three-day conference online, which was very draining, but I won outstanding delegates. So not best like the other panels, but it's definitely something that I'm still proud of because it was a super hard conference to do three days online every like pretty much every hour on Zoom. Um, it was really draining, but you know I spoke a lot. I was able to come up with a strong resolution. I was really proud that I was able to get an award even in that Zoom platform. Thank you so much, Dylan, and great job with that three days. I know that's got to be a lot of work and a, a lot of effort to make that happen. And last but certainly not least, Stephen V, would you please introduce yourself as well? Absolutely. So my name is Stephen. I am a current senior at the College of William and Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia. So I go to school where people are still churning butter and walking cows down the street. So it's a very interesting place. However, I'm also from Long Island, New York. I'm from Merrick uh, in Nassau County. And I have now attended 26 Model United Nations conferences, which is a crazy amount. I did my last one ever a week ago. Um, and I would say the award that I am most proud of was winning the Best Delegate Diplomacy Award at Harvard World Model United Nations Conference two years ago in Spain. And the reason I'm most proud of it is because to do well at this kind of conference, you not only have to overcome you know, the standard model UN challenges in a committee of 300 people, but it's also about bridging language and culture, cultural barriers to people from around the world, and really making sure that we're all on the same page about very intense topics that we all come from such different backgrounds to. So I would say that is my award that I am most proud of, and I'm so excited to be here today with all of you. Thank you very much. As you can see, we have an incredible set of panelists that have competed at hundreds and hundreds of conferences together. And we are so excited to have them answer all of your questions. And without further ado, I wanna jump into some questions that were submitted by all of you about how to stand out in committee. Uh, we had a question submitted by a number of people, including Samir and Prince, and they asked, how do you be a leader in a group of leaders? When there's lots of skilled delegates, how do you stand out? And I'd love to hear from one of our panelists that served, especially as a chair, on how you can stand out as a student when there are so many amazing delegates. So uh, Stephen B, would you mind kicking us off with that one? Absolutely. So, you know, as someone who's been both on the chairing side, on the dais, as well as someone who's been in way too many Model UN conferences at this point, I can tell you that across the board, the thing that stands out the most, whether it's you trying to be a leader to the people around you, or your chairs really trying to understand who is leading is your ability to listen. Now, as much as Model UN is all about talking and is all about debating, what makes a delegate stand out to me if I am choosing awards and if I am listening around is to see who's actually hearing what other people are saying, who is engaging with other people and wanting to know more about their ideas because being able to listen is a lot more powerful than being able to speak. Great advice, Stephen. Thank you so much for sharing that. Do any of our other panelists want to add on to that? Ashley? Yes, I think what Stephen said is great. And I think that listening is something that's so powerful. Um, and in that, I feel like when you go in and obviously a question like this, it's also in the framing of the question where we can kind of make a change, um, right? You're one of the leaders in the room. So I know that one hurdle that I had to overcome in Model UN is trying not to view myself as somebody who was the underdog and really walking in and seeing that, you know, it's just as valid for me to be a leader as everyone else. Um, so a lot of that comes through, you know, listening to people and being the facilitator 
um, which I think is really impressive in being able to listen and almost problem solve in a way that you can say, I have this idea, you have this idea, even though they don't quite match up perfectly, um, being the person to find the compromise um, kind of puts the power in your hands. So I think that not only viewing yourself as a leader, but being an actual leader, not just for show, but like a legitimate leader that helps people put their ideas together um, is something that really um, makes somebody a best delegate, outstanding delegate, just an awarding delegate in general. Thanks, Ashley. And I'd also love Dylan, would you mind sharing a little bit more too on how to stand out in committee? Yeah, definitely. So um, in some of my conferences, I've competed with delegates from all over the world and a school that stood out to me a lot um, as a really competitive and great Mal UN school is the DC International School. And I've competed with really strong delegates from there. And oh, when we always do icebreakers and I hear that I'm like, oh no, this might be a little more difficult to get my ideas across because these are really strong delegates. But going off of what Ashley said, you wanna be confident in yourself. You've done tons of research and preparation to be ready for this conference. Know your stance, stick to it. Um, make sure you're active in debate. You don't wanna to speak too much, but you know, you're know you raising your hand for motions and you're speaking confidently. Um, it goes a long way and you'll be able to, be able to get your ideas passed. And just like I said, sticking to what you know um, instead of a stereotype kind of what a school um, is known to be and sticking to yourself will go a long way. Thank you, Dylan. That is a great answer. And another question that we had about this question of how do you stand out, we got from Hannah and also from Rayhan. They asked us, how do you win best delegate at every conference? How do you get that consistency to be able to really excel in any style of committee, any situation that you might be thrown into. So Harry, would you start us off on that one? How can you be consistent in Model UN? Sure, um, just gonna go back to the question really quickly though about how to win best logo. I think that's everyone on this call wants to know that. And I honestly, I don't think there's an exact answer. I actually wanna bring up a quote that I heard from a Georgina, one of the people who, one of our mentors who said, um, the best delegate usually brings out the best in other delegates. So I try to use that philosophy anytime I'm actually um, trying to win best delegate. But again, it's not an exact science. You can't get it right all the time. But the one thing you should do is always just try your best. Try your best, make sure that you're putting 110% in. And that's honestly what all you can do at the end of the day. Thank you very much, Harry. And I wanna loop back around to that question on consistency. Uh, Jess, do you have any recommendations for people on how they can be consistent and get to the level where they feel comfortable going into committees that there's a good chance that they may win an award at every conference they're participating in? Definitely. But before I answer that, I do want to say I know that there might be beginners in the crowd today. There might be people who um, are really just getting started in their model year and career. And I do want to tell you, like getting best delegate at some conferences is hard. If you're in a GA committee and there's 500 other delegates there, it's going to be very hard to prove yourself and show that you are a leader and you're someone who is the best there. Um, but I would say practice, practice, practice. The more conferences the at you attend, the more worldview you get, um, the more ability to see the nuance and what people are, um, what perspectives people have and where they're coming from and always stepping up to be that negotiation piece who's able to make connections between uh, two reconciliable uh, parties that may not seem like they'll ever get along. Um, that's what's going to be the key. Uh, the dais is always looking for that piece that as, uh, as Gio said to us, uh, she's lovely, um, is going to bring out the piece of the best and other delegates. So I would just recommend make sure that you're always stepping in to help people realize what they have in common. Thank you very much, Jess. And Stephen, do you have anything else on that theme about consistency and standing out for our delegates. Absolutely. So the other type of consistency to think about is if you're someone who does both GAs and crisis committees and doing that navigation, moving back and forth between the two can always make it a bit more challenging to think about how you want to award or if an award is even possible for you. And the fact of the matter is, as long as you're someone who's always trying and is always getting their voice out there, you will do well. 
that is the baseline and that is what you need to bring into every committee and it's been the philosophy that i've run with for 26 conferences is i'm going to speak i'm going to get my ideas out there and i'm going to do the best i can do because at the end of the day chairs are just people too there are probably most likely people who are just like you who have also are competing or have been competing in conferences and at the end of the day you could kill it you could do so so well and just not be seen. So what matters is, is that you know you did the best you could do, that you got your ideas out there, and that you said what you had to say. Thank you very much, Stephen, for bringing that up. I know this event is about how to win awards, but it's also really important just to step up there and try. Uh, participating in Model UN, you learn a lot, you gain a lot of skills, and you grow as a person. And even when you are an amazing MUNer, there will be times that you miss. Um, I won every conference I competed in my sophomore year of college and my junior year of college. And somehow my last conference as a senior, it didn't happen. And you know what? That's okay. Everyone has their days where they really excel in Model UN and days where for whatever reason, the chair didn't see it or it didn't happen. And that is absolutely okay. Don't judge yourself just based on whether or not you win an award or how well you do at a specific conference. It's about growing and learning along the way and helping yourself get confident in your answers. And Jess and Harry, and also we had a Holden ask in advance a question about what does it mean to bring out the best in other delegates? We hear a lot of people, and one of the tips I shared was that a winning delegate brings out the best in other delegates. But can our panelists share some examples of how you've seen students bring out the best in other delegates in a committee and how that's made a difference ultimately in their performance at that conference? Uh, and I'd love to start off with Stephen H. If you want to share a little bit about that for us. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've been in a lot of conferences um, where I've seen people really encourage others to do great, but I've also been in a lot of conferences where I've seen the opposite. I've seen delegates who kind of build themselves up by bringing others down. Um, and that's exactly the kind of performance and the kind of, um, the kind of delegate um, that can really put um, kind of a, a dampening effect on the committee. Um, so to bring out the best in other delegates, um, I think it's really important to always consider, um, one, what would the chair like to see to make this committee run as smoothly as it possibly can? Um, you know, are there going to be certain emotions that you can propose that's going to generate more discussion than others? Are you in a moment where an unmod would really be helpful, um, but there's a really spirited debate that's getting a lot of delegates to participate? Um, you know, choosing your emotions, choosing how to, to frame um, your speeches and, and how you speak with other delegates is a great way to bring out the best in other people. Um, and what I mean by that is I mean to open the conversation for others. Um, we've all been in those screaming on mods, right, where nobody can really get a word out um, and, and no progress is being made. I see the other panelists kind of cringing at the thought of it because it's never a good experience. Um, by bringing out the best in other delegates, um, a really great word that Ashley used was facilitate. You know, being the person who can say, okay, wait, let's pause for a second. You know, this delegate hasn't gotten a chance to speak, but they've been trying for a little while. Um, is, you know, is there something that you'd like to contribute? Um, or, you know, trying to use your experience that you have to answer questions for other delegates when things get confusing or, or things get um, a little uncharted. You know, we've all been in experiences in Model UN conferences where, frankly, we need a little bit of help. We aren't totally sure what's going on and we have a couple questions. So being a delegate that other people can turn to to answer those questions, using your experience to help the entire committee instead of only you, um, these are really great ways that you can not only bring out the best in yourself um, and expect the most out of yourself when you're looking for an award, but also bringing out the best in the people around you. Thank you very much, Stephen. That was an awesome example. And I'll share too, I've seen even situations where an individual was willing to not go up and present a resolution, but as the chair, I saw them contributing the whole time and then empowering a newer delegate to have that opportunity too. And we notice, chairs notice those things. They're watching what's happening in unmoderated caucuses. They're watching the social dynamics that are happening. They see you helping another delegate get more confident to give that speech. And all of that matters and ultimately does make a difference in your experience as well. So next, I'd love to move on to a number of questions that we got around public speaking. I know this can be intimidating for some new MUN delegates and also a lifelong skill that all of us are constantly looking to enhance. And Julia asked us a question, how can I work on not stumbling over my words and being a more confident speaker? And I'd love to have Harry kick us off on sharing a little bit about how you can get more comfortable uh, with your public speaking. Sure. So um, I'm just going to share with you a little story. Um, even now, and 
even when I started my Molly Young career, from my first conference, even to my most recent conference, look, I've always sort of stumbled over my words, whether that be in a few speeches or, um, or even, for example, right now, I'm stumbling over my own words right now. But th- honestly, just don't worry about it too much. It's not, it's not a big deal. It's, it's not going to sort of blow up in your face and end your entire conference. There's one thing that you always have to remember is that, look, you've made a mistake. Everyone's not perfect, but just try your best next time. And some of the sort of strategies that helped me um, get out of this sort of little rut that I was in where I just kept constantly stumbling over my um, speeches was I'd r- write down a few of the bullet points or the, the key ideas of my speech on a piece of paper. I wouldn't write down my entire speech, but I'd write down a key points and then I would just read them off or if I just was slowly starting to forget and ramble on about a random point I would go look at my sheet again and I'd get right back on track and that's honestly a really great thing um, and also what I like to do is in the morning before I'm getting dressed for a conference I like to sometimes practice my primary speakers list speech in the mirror and just say how am I going to structure this how am I going to think about this and honestly those those two things those two things really honestly help you um, improve your public speaking I feel at least. Awesome advice, Harry. Dylan, do you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, definitely. So everything that Harry said, I actually use the same thing. Um, The bullet points has been something I've used since I started Molly when in sixth grade. Also, I'd like to add practice is a huge aspect of it. Um, You know, I started at a young age. I can't remember what age I was in sixth grade, but probably like 10 or 11 or 12. Um, And, you know, now I'm turning 16. So when you have more experience and you have more practice, you get better. So you know, in my first conference in sixth grade, I was so nervous to give my first speech and, um, you know, not to my recollection, but I can definitely, um, you know, envision and remember kind of that I was definitely stumbling over my uh, words when I was giving that first speech ever. Um, You know, with more practice and more time, you're going to start seeing those results that you want. So if you're a beginner, keep at it, Um, just get better over time. Thank you for that advice. We really appreciate that, Dylan. And we also got some questions about just having the confidence to try when you're nervous. Uh, Luca asked, what should you do if you're too nervous to attend that first conference? And Jess, do you have any advice for Luca and for all of our new delegates that are just looking to get started with Model UN? Absolutely. Well, I told my story right at the beginning, right? At my first conference ever, I had to excuse myself. I was in tears. I was ready to call it quits. And I remember distinctly what my mom said to me. Um, She said, you know what, Jess, every single other person in that room is nervous. No matter how much experience you have, you're still going to have that first day of the conference jitters. The dais is going to be up there nervous about the, um, the background guide and where the conference is going to take the committee. Um, every single person is going to still be a little bit shaky on that first day. And it's all about pushing yourself just a little bit further and trusting that everyone else in the room is going to still value your opinion and listen to what you have to say, no matter how it comes out. If you stutter, if you trip over your words, if your point isn't exactly the one that you wanted to make, that's okay. The most important part is that you gave it a try. And if you need to excuse yourself for a water break or just to catch your breath, that's okay. You can take that time to do so. No, excuse me, no one's stopping you. Thank you, Jess. That's great advice. It is okay to be nervous. It's okay to get out there. The most important thing is that you try. Everyone's been there in that first conference. And also, if you're looking for a really accepting and welcoming environment, consider checking out Best Elliot's training conferences. We have monthly conferences each month with incredible mentors, some of whom are right in this room as panelists. Raise your hand if you've ever staffed one of those conferences. Yeah. So uh, many of them are there, the friendly faces that will welcome you and help guide you through that first conference. So I'd I'd recommend checking out a training conference. That's a great way to get started too. If it's too intimidating to try one of the huge conferences first, that's a great way to get your foot in the door. Next up, I'd like to move on to a couple of questions that we had about crisis style MUN. So first of all, could one of our awesome panelists briefly explain what is crisis style model UN? And specifically, as Sreeman asked, how can you win awards in crisis committees specifically? Uh, So Ashley, would you kick us off with that, please? Yeah, of course. Um, So crisis, I like to think of of more of a boardroom style um, or even like a cabinet style committee. Um, It's way more informal. 
And you have the aspect of not only you're writing smaller resolutions, which we call directives, um, but you're also writing crisis notes, which accomplish an ulterior motive that you might have in committee, um, which is really interesting because that's kind of something that might not be discussed as often. Um, but obviously, we know everyone has their own personal interests. Um, I think that one thing in crisis that really um, elevates you and helps you be able to do all of the things that you need to do and have all of the research um, is adaptability. Adaptability is literally the name of the game in crisis. I know that for my last couple of conferences that I've done in college, I've studied not too much for the conferences. I've studied, you know, the content and what I need to know to be able to give my speeches and have solutions. Um, but as far as my crisis notes and my crisis arcs, I always go in and I'm ready to adapt because at the end of the day, um, I really want to make sure that when crisis gives me a problem, I'm giving them a solution. Uh, so always being creative is probably my best advice and really thinking of all of the things that you could possibly do um, as far as creativity goes. Um, I think that really shines through. Thank you very much, Ashley. And Carmen also asked, how can your crisis notes have a huge impact on committee? How can you influence the way that a committee is happening and, and really be a part of that crisis? Uh, so Stephen B, I'd love to hear from you a little bit on how you can influence what's happening throughout a crisis. Absolutely. So at the core of a crisis committee to me, it's about putting yourself as the main character in a story about you. And by focusing on yourself and writing your notes almost like a journal about your main character's life in this story, the story is about you, so the crisis will become about you. So really positioning yourself in the middle is how you make sure that you become a bigger deal in crisis updates and any events that might go on in committee. Uh, for me, I always try to do this by putting my own character at the center of a movement or at the center of some big political shift in the world. And I do this because if I don't think I'm my own main character, then how is Crisis going to think that you're your own main character? So as long as you make sure that they know that this is a book and you are the star and protagonist of this book, you will do just fine. Thank you very much, Stephen. That's great advice. And for those of you that think this sounds like a foreign language that aren't familiar with crisis and want to learn more about it, again, feel free to check out the Learning Center. There's some awesome videos on how to get started with crisis, what are crisis notes, what are crisis directives, and it can help you really get a broader understanding on some of those basics as well. The next question we also got related to crisis was from Annabelle. She asked, what strategies does anyone have for multitasking? Because there's so much happening, both in crisis and in general Model UN. How can you multitask and be involved in what is happening throughout a committee? And uh, Dylan, I'd love to hear from you on, on really how someone can approach that situation. Yeah, definitely. So Ashley brought up the term adaptability for a crisis, and I completely agree. I'm also going to add, you know, in the question, multitasking, that's a huge part of a crisis. You want to be adaptable. You also want to be able to multitask. And something I would say for multitasking is prioritize yourself. So as Stephen brought up and Ashley brought up, you want, you're going to want to build your crisis arc, but make sure that you're also contributing to committee. So last week I was on staff for Best Delegates Black Lives Matter Crisis. And so I was receiving emails from delegates trying to build their crisis arc. But you only, I only receive an email from a delegate once every 10 or 15 minutes because you wanna also be contributing into the general committee to help work to that end directive or end goal to try to solve the problem at hand. So, you know, make sure you're not really focusing too much on one aspect, kind of splitting your time down the middle. Um, it'll really go a long way. You won't kind of get drained. You know, you help moving forward on the general topic and issue at hand while still building your crisis arc um, and trying to get to that end goal that your character or, um, you know, that the person that you're representing is trying to achieve. Great advice, Dylan. We also got a number of questions about what are opportunities to do Model UN over the next few months and over the summer, and how can I continue to enhance my skills and also compete? And so I'd love to talk a little bit about some of these opportunities. And we got a question spe specifically from Abiha on how can I make the most and the best of this summer with Model UN? Uh, Jess, would you mind helping us get started with that one? Absolutely. And I can tell you for certain, COVID has definitely helped you out in this front because there are more online and summer opportunities for Model UN than ever. Um, I would definitely recommend the Best Delegate Virtual Model UN Institute over the summer. 
Um, I went to several of those conferences and opportunities last summer, and I can tell you it was insanely helpful. Another thing that I will tell you is that there's always going to be local and small conferences that happen basically every week um, that are just great for practice. Um, those awards aren't going to be, you know, the most impressive ones as there might be only 15, 20, 25 delegates, but it's still great for practice and just improving your ability. And as you're doing the research, gaining a little bit more information that you can use at other conferences. Um, I would also suggest just doing things to increase your um, your knowledge on the world and international relations generally. Um, so seeking opportunities to learn more about the UN and learn more about relations between countries and a little bit about what has happened over the last couple of years. Um, that's definitely going to help you out a lot in improving yourself, even if you're not during your um, you're not currently in your Model UN club meetings or you're not participating in any of the fall sessions. Thank you, Jess, that's some great advice. Uh, Dylan, do you have anything you'd like to add there? Yeah, so this um, relates to the summer and just the year as a whole. Something I recommend doing, it's something I've actually started this year with the world changing so rapidly, is I sent my phone to get a notification from news sources such as CNN or ABC every morning. So I kind of know what's going to happen for that day. And it's really helpful because, you know, I'll get out like 630 in the morning. And that's the first thing I see. So I kind of know what's um, going on in regards to the summer. Obviously, most people are going to have uh, more time over the summer. So something I recommend doing is, you know, maybe for a half hour every day, you turn on the news and just kind of keep up to date. You can also do more research into a specific issue which you find interesting, um, such as nuclear disarmament or the Black Lives Matter movement or climate change to really hone in your skills on a specific issue. And just making sure that you're staying generally aware of world events, even though school isn't going on. If you do that on your own time, it will also go a long way for that next school year of competitions. Thank you, Dylan. And I know that Jess mentioned the Virtual MUN Institute, and we also got a question from Hannah and a few others about that program. Ashley, would you mind sharing a little bit about the Virtual MUN Institute? I know you were one of our amazing mentors at the program last year as well. Yeah. So uh, first of all, I just want to say I love VMUNI. One of the best things about having to be online, which is obviously not a fun thing, but I feel like we've been able to increase the accessibility to programs like this that have been able to benefit so many students. Um, VMUNI really, I feel like by the end of it, all of my, I guess, classes have felt kind of like a family. Um, we've been able to grow a lot together and it's kind of an all encompassing MUN experience. Um, and being able to go and make sure that everyone is understanding different concepts and we're able to really be hands on and teach you all the questions that you might have had in the past has been really, really impactful. And it's been really awesome to see a lot of those students transition um, in the, some of the conferences and the MUN team. So um, I think it's super fun. We always have a lot of good icebreakers. And um, obviously, we never want it to feel like class. We always have it feel more like a summer camp. And that's always incredible. And yeah, um, I've been able to do it in person briefly and then now online. And I think both ways have been excellent. And I think it's it's really great to be able to make friends all over the world and be able to bond over something like Molly UN. Thank you so much, Ashley, for sharing. Stephen V, do you have anything you want to share as well? I know you have a lot of experience with the program. Absolutely. So I also served as a VMUNI Diplomacy Fellow last summer, uh, where I worked and helped people really improve their MUN skills as well as through private tutoring too. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of you here are all on your MUN teams programs and have all done the, all these other things for the last few semesters and you're wondering what the difference is. So to me, the big difference is that not only do you have to improve your Model UN skills, but we actually have to learn a ton about the topic theme of the week. So one of my favorite things was when we could actually focus on one major issue, whether it was climate change or whether it was deforestation um, or whether it was different human rights movements that we were talking about. So it kind of takes us away from the whole model part of Model UN and we really actually get to dive in and talk about these serious issues going on in the world. Uh, and I consistently find, and please don't tell any, uh, any real diplomats out there, but we usually have a lot better ideas in our generation than people in the generation after us. Um, so it's such an amazing time to actually talk about these solutions and come up with answers together, which is to me, one of the biggest differences between MUN teams uh, and the, the, the VMUNI program. 
Thank you, Stephen. And just for a little bit of context, I know a few people have mentioned MUN Teams as well as BMUNI and some of these different acronyms. Um, so at a high level, I just want to share that Best Delegate runs a lot of amazing programs all throughout the year. Throughout the year, there are opportunities to participate in conferences. There are training conferences as well as invitational and advanced conferences. And there's even a tournament of champions. And I'll tell you all a little bit more about that in a few minutes. And then there's also Model UN Teams. And so during the year, if you don't have a club at your school, or if you want another opportunity to continue to enhance your skills, we have MUN teams that you can be a part of. Actually, Jess, Harry, and Dylan are all part of our student leadership MUN team, and they've had an incredible group that's worked together over the last 10 weeks and competed in conferences and helped to chair and staff at conferences as well. And if you've heard Ashley or Steven or anyone else use the phrase VMUNI, that is casually what people who have attended our programs call the Virtual MUN Institute, which is the five-day program where people really get to take their skills uh, to the next level. But before we wrap up, I would love to do one quick round with all of our panelists. I know at the beginning I shared a speed round of 10 tips and we've heard some amazing advice from each of these panelists. And I would love for each of our panelists to just share one final tip or piece of advice or wisdom that they have for the group in 30 seconds or less uh, to give everyone something to take away with them today. So Ashley, would you please start us off on a tip that you have for everyone here today? Yeah, of course. So aside from adaptability, really the point of Model UN is to be able to frame yourself and the perception of yourself in a way that really highlights you and your ideas. Um, a lot of times I see in conferences students with really great ideas and either they don't get on the paper or they don't take full ownership. Uh, so always think about your perception, how other delegates are kind of interacting with you um, and how you can take how intelligent that all of our students are, obviously, um, and really translating it into something that you take ownership for and you're able to really hold proud to everyone. So, yeah, I think perception is one thing to consider and just making sure you take that ownership. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, next up, Dylan. Yeah, so building off of that, actually, kind of my own tip is be confident in yourself, right? Like I said in the beginning, you know what you're doing. You're going in with information on your country and the topic and be confident. Also kind of going off what Ashley was saying about writing, follow through. I've seen as a chair and as a delegate, you don't want kind of like a delegate burnout. You want to pace yourself to follow through to the end. So you start off strong with that first speaker's list um speech and it's okay to be a little nervous that will help you i'm still always a little nervous before i give that first speech but you give it you get right into it and um you know once you give it you'll be that much more confident and again just following through making sure that you still participate in unmoderated caucuses because they're just as important as the speakers list and then you follow through with the author's panel and um writing that resolution thank you very much dylan next up jess would you please share a tip for everyone Yes, I have a tip which is a little bit of a challenge to all of you. At your next tournament, find the person who you haven't heard speak recently. Find the person who's not speaking as much as everyone else, seems a little bit nervous. Go to them in an unmod, uh, ask for their opinion. Say, hey, Ashley, do you want to be a signatory on my bill? Hey, Stephen, I, ha I noticed you haven't talked on this issue. Um, can I hear your opinion? Uh, hey, Harry, do you want to sponsor this bill with me? I think we have a similar uh, opinion on this. Um, that's going to go a long way as you're going to have a benefit with a chair if they notice. You're going to have an extra signatory and you might even have a friend who's a Model UN associate for years to come. Thank you very much, Jess. Harry, would you please share a tip for everyone? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think my biggest tip, and this is probably going to mostly be directed towards those who are new to multi UN, but also I think more experienced people can always take uh, take my advice. Be a risk taker. So whether that whether that's going up to speak or presenting a paper, just take the risk. But nothing can harm you in multi UN. It's a simulation. And I like to just um, use a quote from my mother when she said, look, nothing you ever do or learn will ever harm you in the future. It'll only enhance your abilities and your perspective. So I think if that's one piece of advice I could give to all of you is just be risk takers in Model UN and also just in life general. Thanks, Harry. Great advice. Stephen H., would you please share a tip you have for everyone? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's really great to have laser focus when you're in committee and be, you know, 100% on the ball at all times. But my big piece of advice is don't take yourself too seriously. 
um, you know, you're going to make mistakes. It's going to happen. Um, you're going to fumble on your words. You're going to slip up. You're going to stutter. And that's okay. Take a second to laugh about it. Take a second to get to know the people in your committee and in your block. Take a second to ask people where they're from, how they're doing, what do they think of how things are going so far? Because not only is that gonna make you a great person to communicate with, it's gonna put you kind of at the center like we've talked about so far. It's gonna make people eager to talk to you and hear your ideas on things. But it's also gonna allow you to, make, to meet some really cool people. Um, I've, we've been in Model UN for so long. We've done virtual Model UN now for a really long time too. And it's an opportunity to create a global network of friends, a global network of people who care about issues that you do, um, and who, who want to see the, the world improve just like you do. Um, so taking a second to introduce, introduce yourself and, and speak with the people in your block and get to know each other a little bit more really goes a long way in Model UN. Thank you very much, Stephen H. And last but not least, Stephen B, do you have any final tips for everyone? I do, and my tip is just three words, raise your hand. That is the biggest tip I can leave you with. The biggest mistake and thing I hear from so many delegates is, oh, I already said what I had to say. I didn't have to say anything else. You always have something to say. You will always need to say something. So if you wanna succeed, and this is well beyond Model UN, raise your hand and have your voice heard because the chairs want to hear from you. And that is the biggest barrier that once you cross, there's no going back and you're always gonna do well. So raise your hand, get your voice out there because we really, really wanna hear it. Stephen V, that's amazing advice. And if I can go one step before that advice, in order to raise your hand, you have to sign up. You have to keep trying at Model UN, participating in conferences, participating in training opportunities and learning and growing. So I'd love to take just a few minutes to share with all of you some upcoming opportunities to participate in Model UN. And specifically, there's a couple of really exciting programs coming up with Best Delegate that I'd love to tell all of you a little bit more about. And if any of you are already signed up for any of these, feel free to drop it in the chat. We'd love to get to know some of you that are coming to some of these programs. So next month, we have some amazing conferences that have happened. It's not too late to participate in a Model UN conference. We have a training conference that's happening. We have a one-day training conference on May 22nd and a one-day training conference on May 23rd. So if you are a new Model UN delegate and you want to get another chance to practice and learn Model UN, please feel free to sign up for that conference. And we also have a tournament of champions happening on May 22nd and May 23rd. So if you've won an award at any major Model UN conference, it's not a training conference, you are qualified to attend this tournament of champions, which will be an incredible two-day conference. It is all UN Security uh, Council style, and it will be chaired by some of the incredible people you've met here today, including Ashley. And it's a great chance for you to really put what you've learned to the test and enjoy competing with some of the best delegates. And so if you want to participate in a conference this year, it's not too late. Uh, the registration deadline is tomorrow. So please go ahead and sign up if you want one more conference opportunity to do Model UN during this school year. I also want to share with you a little bit more about the virtual MUN Institute. I know many of our students who participated in it have shared with you as well as our staff that have run it. And if you are wondering what program might be right for me, if you are new to Model UN, consider checking out our diplomat, junior diplomat, or mini diplomat program based on your grade level. And if you are experienced and want to take your skills to the next level, implement many of the things we've talked about tonight and get feedback from our incredible set of mentors, consider our ambassador programs. We have our ambassador program for students in grades 9 and 12 and our junior ambassador program for students in grades 7 and 8. And if you're interested in crisis, that fast-paced, dynamic style Model UN committee, please consider our crisis program for students in grades 9 and 12 and our junior crisis program for students in grades 7 and 8. And the programs this summer are a ton of fun. Every day you'll get to participate in public speaking activities and icebreakers. You'll get to negotiate and do practice simulations. And Thursday and Friday, you'll have a full simulation. And like Stephen mentioned earlier, one of the really cool things is that each week has a different theme. And so each week you'll defeat Zoom burnout with our team. I promise it's a ton of fun and you'll get to save the world while learning about issues that you're really passionate about. We have themes including racial justice and gender equality and protecting endangered species and the Olympics and so much more. So please feel free to check out our website. We have programs every week of summer from June 14th through August and you can build a dynamic summer where you learn about a lot of different topics 
build your skills and learn about global issues in depth. And if you have any questions about any of our programs, please feel free to reach out to us. We'll also stay and answer any other questions that pop up in the chat now as well. Uh, but our team is really excited to help all of you learn Model UN. Please feel free to contact us. You can see our phone number here, as well as our email, support at bestdelegate.com. And we just are very, very excited to help you continue with Model UN. And truly, I wanna say thank you to all of our panelists who joined us here tonight, to all of you who took time out of your evening to come listen, and also to Best Delegates co-founder, Ryan Villanueva, who behind the scenes was answering many of your questions as well. Um, so thank you all so much for joining us this evening. We truly, truly appreciate it. And we hope that you all continue your Model UN journeys and continue with what you have learned so far with Model UN. If anyone has any additional questions about any questions about Model UN or about the programs, please feel free to drop them in the chat. And if not, I want to say thank you so much to all of you and please have a great evening.